dead CPUs, spray painted memory, dead power supplies. Is there any way of testing and fixing these things? Let's find out. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Tech Yes City. And today I've got some of those crazy experiments coming back at you. And the first one is the stick of memory that I spray painted sometime last year. Now I just finally got around to taking, stripping the paint off and then putting it back in the system and testing whether it works again. So let's get onto that experiment. Okay, so here's the moment of truth with the one gigabyte stick. Let's do this. Uh, yeah, so that's the memory problem, so the RAM is not being recognized. Optimus, forgive me. So we've put a working 1GB DDR3 stick in. As we can see here, we've got 7GB of DDR3 memory because it's working alongside another 6GB of DDR3 memory. And we're going to put in the paintbrush, uh, now fully cleansed. RAM stick and see if it still works. I mean, how tough is that? I mean, I've got seven gigabytes of DDDR3 memory. Guys, I'm running lucky sevens. <laughs> At least you'll be unique on the internet. No one will be able to copy you. But anyway, let's check if this bad boy works. Okay, system information. Seven gigabytes of DDR3 memory, woo! Okay, woo! our stick woo! has come back woo! from the dead. Woo! Woo! So what we're gonna woo! do now is we're going to try one more test with this one gigabyte woo! of DDR3 memory stick. We're gonna wash it with water and soap and see if it still works. Okay, so here we go. We're going to start putting some soap on. And this is probably the part where you guys are watching this video and going, what the actual f am I watching? So don't worry guys, it's all in the name of enthusiast tech. You know, when you came to Tech Yes City, you knew what you were getting into, brother. You knew, oh, you knew. So here we go, we're gonna scrub this down, give it a good cleanse. And then we're gonna see and then we're going to wash it, of course. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you can give this a hot wash, a cold wash, whatever you want to give this. Uh, DDR3 memory stick, your flavor. Let's give that a nice good wash there. And we will start hair drying it, you know, put a hair dryer on it and get it all dry. So we're just going to quickly get the excess water off with some tissues and then we're going to dry it. So the moment of truth is upon us. We are going to now test this nice, fresh, and so clean one gigabyte stick of memory after it has been under the tap and also under with some soap, detergent, and a brush. So, and under a hairdryer too. So <laughs> just how much of a beating can some PC parts take, I don't know, this poor little bad boy has been through hell and back. I mean, he's been under paint seven, was it? I didn't even know how many different coats of paint I put on that. Uh, and then he's been cleaned with water. Hey. <laughs> he still works, ladies and gentlemen, he still works. So seven gigabytes of DDR3 memory is being confirmed here. So the stick is recognized again, and that is some wicked news. It means you can wash PC parts, but 
So the next experiment we've got going on here is a dead CPU, specifically a dead CPU with resistors that have crumbled off the back of the CPU. Now in my case, this did not work at all. I had a circuit writer and I did a pretty careful job of connecting the circuits back up. However, when I installed it again, there was just no signal whatsoever. So in the case of the dead CPU, I'd recommend maybe getting some original resistors that aren't broken and trying that if you can. But keep in mind though, a warped die is pretty much impossible to bring back to life. So the next experiment we've got up here is a dead power supply and without further ado, let's get on to this experiment. Okay, so testing a dead power supply and seeing whether it's truly dead or not comes down to actually testing it itself. Now when I turn that on, the fan quickly spun up. However, you can see now if I try to turn the motherboard on now, there's just nothing happening. So essentially this power supply is uh, damaged somewhat somewhere internally. I don't know, it looks like a short since it just actually got something little out to the fan and it just doesn't work. So that's how you actually truly test a dead power supply or not is actually by plugging it up to an, uh, cheap components if you can. So it's always good to keep something like a Pentium 4 and a motherboard around your house just to check power supplies. That would be something I would suggest because uh, testing a power supply like this on a cheap motherboard and a Pentium and one gig rams of sticks and a GT, whatever this is, uh, I've got nothing to lose here really. So this power supply is bricked and we can chuck that in the bin. So the fourth and final experiment is can you use a PCI Express port to power your hard drives? Let's find out. So on this next experiment, we've got a power supply which has no Molex or SATA connectors on it. So I'm gonna try and use a PCIe to PCIe female and then a PCIe to Molex to Molex to Molex female and then a Molex to a SATA connector and see if that powers on the hard drive. Because I wanna be able to actually make use of this power supply in a real world scenario. So if this kind of works, then we should see success. So anyway, let's boot up the computer. So, I don't know what happened there. Come on, trusty file, there we go. And we're just gonna see if it uh, boots up and then we're gonna go into the BIOS and check if the hard drive's in there. Okay, so we're in uh, setup now, and our trusty little hard drive is not being recognized. All right, so we're just gonna try up a DVD. Uh, DVD ROM, or a DVD random, a DVD writer, whatever. Now, nah, I'm not getting recognized, so I guess this SATA to whatever it is, SATA to SATA to SATA to SATA to Molex just doesn't work. So there we have it guys, all the experiments. And the biggest one that surprised me was this stick of memory here, this little one gigabyte stick of DDR3 memory. It survived some really harsh conditions. I actually left it outside for a couple of days as well when I was using the parts cleaner on it to strip the paint. And it still survived. It survived a brush, soap, washing, hair dryer, and still works. So <laughs> I'm pretty surprised. And I guess the verdict on that is, is that you can wash PC parts. Just be very careful to make sure that there's no charges left in any of the capacitors or anything like that. So the next experiment we had was the CPUs. And in general, if your CPUs have been warped from either too much heat and or too much voltage, and they usually go hand in hand, then your CPU will no longer work. Just keep in mind though that CPUs do have sensors on them and thermal protections. However, they don't always oh, they aren't always a perfect safe fail. Just keep that in mind because the sensors aren't located all across the die and it only takes one micro part of that chip to overheat and warp and you've got a dead CPU. And this applies to GPUs as well. Then we had the power supply experiment and as you can see, this power supply wasn't working and the easiest way to test for that was to use a test motherboard and CPU and one stick of memory. Now the cheapest way to have a test set up would be to go to pick up one of those old Pentium 4 systems that you can get for like five bucks and use that as a tester, uh, maybe at one of your friends or leave it in your friend's garage or whatever, just for testing power supplies. As you can see in this case, it did let out a bit of power when it first started up, but it didn't power on the computer at all. So that's the definite way to test for faulty power supplies. Then the last experiment I had for you guys was the PCI Express port from a power supply powering hard drives. And that just didn't work flat out. No power going to either the hard drive 
or the actual DVD drive that I tried. Now the good news that came out of that was that the hard drive or the DVD drive, they both didn't fry, they both still worked when I plugged them up to my other computer. And now for the final last experiment, and this is how to discharge your power supply. So there, if you've turned off your power supply and you wanna clean it and you wanna make sure that there's absolutely no power left in that power supply, then you can do the Tech Yes City method and that is put on an insulated glove and get yourself a file with a plastic handle and then just make sure those connections are letting off no electric discharge at all. So anyway, that's all for today, folks. If you like this video, then you know what to do. Hit that like button and also subscribe if you haven't already for more juicy tech news reviews and whatnot. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.